so I wanted to graduate and be in the purity class because I had to wear the ugly yellow suit and I wanted the blue the matlock suit. And so, but I had to wait till I was 13. There was no exception. My daddy was the pastor and the superintendent of the district. And he couldn't do nothing for me. I said, Daddy, just let me go in on your status. He's like, no, when you get 13, you'll be able to do it. Amen? So 13, we'll see y'all Wednesday. All right, is that all the announcements? The swap, all the stuff coming up. Be mindful of those things. Amen? Amen. All right, we're going to get right into the word. AdamantBeliever.com forward slash Godly Esteem. God, has God been working on this fellowship? Have y'all felt it in your heart? You felt the pricking, the pulling and the twisting, the stabbing and the kicking, the choking and the provoking. (laughs) God has been working on this fellowship. He wants us a glorious church. Ever since Bishop came and preached that, it's like that's what we, amen, that's what God has been ministering to us. A glorious church. And so that's who we want to be. So in order to do that, you got to have godly esteem. Because if you have low self-value, low self-worth in this day and age, the devil is going to exploit you. So you better know where your esteem comes from. Amen. Low self-esteem will ruin your life. Low self-esteem will mess your marriage up. Low self-esteem will keep you from getting married. Low self-worth. You devalue yourself, you're going to marry somebody that's going to keep devaluing you to make himself feel better. He's looking for somebody that don't think much of themselves. So there'll be no expectations on him because he's jive. I'm already preaching. Oh, I don't have time to go into it. (laughs) Check previous messages. I've gone into it before. We also released the Focus Prayer podcast. And man, oh, I just, if I could tell you all the testimonies. Oh, gosh. Folks being healed. Folks going back to their spouses. Folks, children. I mean, it just, man, just from praying. People are letting it play all night. And they say they'll wake up and hear the answer in the middle of the night and go start praying with it. Because it's all scripture. It's praying scripture. Man, I'm telling you, boy, the devil didn't like that move. Oh, my goodness. But who cares? Amen. Right, baby. Godly esteem. So adamantbeliever.com forward slash godly esteem. That baby was speaking a word, wasn't it? Speaking better tongues than some of these adults. You might need an interpreter. Let's wait. Let's wait a minute and see. Oh, yeah, another baby interpreted. Boy, that'll be awesome. But God, Godly Steve, adamantbeliever.com forward slash godly. Us thing. All right. God's word is who? Look at somebody say, God's word is who he is. I put that on Instagram this morning. It's important for you to know. Oh, thank God. My mom is here today. Bless you, mother. And my mom over here with the hound's tooth outfit on. She's clean today. Little sparkles. See the lights hitting the sparkles. Boy, you better go on, Grammy. They ain't ready for you. <laughs> Amen. But God's word is who he is. Look at somebody and say, God's word, God's word is who he is. It's who he is. So when you pray his word, you pray his presence. If he is his word, when you pray his word, you call forth his presence. That's where we've made the mistake. All them old. I mean, well, Lord, forgive me. Some prayers are good coming out of your head or whatever your feelings and different things. God honors your feelings. He said he is not a high priest that cannot be touched by the feelings of our infirmities, but if at all points have been tempted the same way we are, yet without sin. He said that in his word. So, yeah, he does hear you and understand you. But you can't do that all the time. Sometimes you got to get the word of God and pray that to invoke his presence. Because if he's a part of what you're praying, you're going to get answers. 
Because he is the answer. Jesus is the answer for the world. Y'all don't know that? Above him there's no other. Sing it, Landon. Jesus is the way. Boy, they ain't ready. That's that Andre Crouch, boy. John 1 and 1, in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word, what? Was God. Our minds, 3D, that makes no sense. How was the Word in the beginning? The Word was with God, and the Word was God. That's how great he is, but he is his Word. And in order to fill the void of acceptance in our lives, we must know and understand how God thinks of us. Most of us, 90, 100 percent, let me say that, of us have some kind of void of acceptance because our society engineered it that way. Our society engineered it to where even when we went to public school, somebody made fun of us. You had to get with the crowd that was good at making fun of people so that you wouldn't get made fun of. Am I telling the truth? Yeah, you have to get with that crowd of bullies as they bullied somebody else. You was on the bully side pointing, knowing that if you was on the other side, because you know, I was one of the ones that I'd be just talking about them with the bullies. Then when the bullies leave, man, I didn't mean that, man. You really cool, man. Like, your bell bottoms, dude, they really are cool. I feel sorry for him. I couldn't do it. I, I wouldn't be able to sleep that night. So I was always the one going around behind the bully's back. <laughs> but our school system was engineered to put that in us, some kind of void of acceptance so that we would work for acceptance. So if you were getting bullied, you do good and get good grades so that you could overcome that issue of not being accepted by the in crowd. Right? So your path was nerd them. I'll be a nerd. At least the nerds get recognized. The teacher says, okay, we have one A. <laughs> that would be mine. <laughs> oh, little freckle-faced midget. <laughs> midget with an A. <laughs> one day you will work for me. <laughs> Boy, I was proud of my nerd them this. One day, oh, I take your whole calculator apart. You won't be able to fix it back. <laughs> yeah, so you find some kind of way, but still, I was working for acceptance. I, I was a musician. I played, and I didn't want to play in the band without somebody recognizing me. I wasn't up there just because I was good. I wanted some hand claps. Y'all better clap for me. No. I, <laughs> thank you, Sister Christina. I appreciate that. I'm going to remember that. I'll remember that. She did clap. But when I was young, I did. I wanted somebody. So that kind of approval, you know, if they made fun of me being short and freckled and a midget, then I, and when I did something good, I was exonerated. Or I felt exonerated. I felt like I had overcome their opinion of me. So I had a void of acceptance. And when you come to Christ, you got to get delivered from that. Listen, don't, don't, don't clap. You can't just get saved and think it's going to go away. If you just get saved, you'll be saved looking for acceptance. And a person that's saved looking for acceptance will compromise. I know I'm preaching in here. So you got to get delivered from it. You got to call it out. You got to call it out. Because those comments shape the way you feel about yourself. You'll be hard on yourself. You won't let yourself off the hook and then the devil knows it so he'll bring some old wolf to bark at you and make you feel bad about who you are. And God doesn't even feel like that. You think God would allow a part of who he is, his son, to come out of his kingly position to come to lowly earth to die for your sins if you weren't valuable to him? So you can't let what people say shape the way you feel about yourself. 
Psalms 139 and 17. How precious also are thy thoughts unto me, O God. How great is the sum of them. God, only your thoughts matter is what he's saying. People have their opinion. David, remember, David was a man after God's own heart, but the devil tried to create a situation where people thought less of him. So David fell into sin. He, you know, got forgiveness and all of that, but people still, one dude was throwing rocks at him. God is like, no, this is still the man after my own heart, even though he fell. But somebody throwing rocks at him. You are, you bloody king. You kill somebody. But God never saw David that way. Amen. Y'all better be glad it ain't the Old Testament because, you know, David was like, no, leave him alone. Leave him alone because, yeah, I did some stuff. Yeah, leave him alone. Let him throw the rocks. Ooh. But when Solomon took over, remember that dude that was throwing the rocks? <laughs> Go get him. And killed him. Don't you throw rocks at my daddy. Amen. That's that Old Testament payback. He's probably somewhere thought he had got off. Hey, what's up, man? What's up, y'all? <laughs> no, bro. <laughs> the Grim Reaper is visiting you. But in order to fill the void of acceptance, all of us have struggled with this in some way or another. And that void of acceptance is what the enemy constantly uses to make you feel less than worthy. Of God because of something somebody did some way they treated you whatever the case you can't let the devil make you feel that way about yourself or you'll miss out on God's plan for you the word of God approves of who we are and gives us a new self-image when we hear his word and do what it says his word does that. James 1 and 23 says, If any man be a hearer of the word and not a doer, he is likened unto a man beholding his natural face in a glass. That means you look in the mirror and see yourself for who you are, but then you walk away and forget who you are. That's a hearer and not a doer. But if you're a hearer and a doer, you'll always remember who you are because you're doing the things that make you like him. Amen. Oh, we're going to work on this esteem because this is where the devil get folks. Amen. You'll see people in here and we got, people, we got some very successful folk in here doing very well. They may be doing really good financially and then you'll see your situation and you'll try to compare your situation to them because you have a void of acceptance. Not knowing where they came from. Amen. I don't think we have any princes in here that inherited their dad's kingdom. No, we got folk in here that work. Amen. <laughs> Only the manufacturer can approve of his creation. Only the manufacturer, but when they made the first iPhone, they were in that chamber where he had them with no windows and stuff. Y'all got to know the story of Steve Jobs, how he basically tortured them to come up with that phone. And they all in there creating the phone. No, it was the iPod. They all in there creating the iPod. They all in there working, working, working. And then they'd bring it to him and he'd look at it and say, no, nah, that's not it. Go back. They go back in there, be locked up for weeks. He just barely feeding them. Yeah, that's how he did them. He would barely feed them everything, but the one thing he did was really clever. He would take them out of the room and bring them out like in, outside in the sun under a tree, and he began to talk to them to tell them how valuable and how important they really were. It was called the reality distortion field. He created that. What he was doing was he would lock them up to where they were miserable, but then he'd be their saving grace by bringing them out. So then that made his words more powerful to them. So they felt like, oh, wow, can't wait to get back in the dungeon. And they'd go in there and they'd make it. Yeah, that's true. 
And so, but because he, Steve Jobs, was the manufacturer, it don't matter what you thought of the iPod. It could only be approved of by him. If he didn't think it was right, oh, nope, that won't fit in my back pocket. When I walk in there and do my speech, it's got to fit in the back pocket. So he hand it back to you. That's too big. Oh, no, that's not clean enough. Too many buttons on it. I just need one wheel. You got to take it back until he's pleased with it. But once he's pleased with it, he approves it. And that approves everyone that created with him. Everyone that worked on it gets that approval because he's the manufacturer. Does that make sense? Well, only the manufacturer can approve of his creation. Others can celebrate it, criticize it, or even use it for their own benefit. But real approval of who we are comes from what? Who's our manufacturer? God. God. So, listen, this is why it's so important to know what the word says about you. Because if you're going by what people said, that's not real approval. Because people didn't make you. Amen. The manufacturer created the idea of being human. So he has the approval. Yeah. People will say anything, many times, anything the devil tell them to say. They'll say the things that they're hurting about to you to make you hurt with them. They'll decrease your value with their words. Jesus said his words are spirit and what? Life. His words. That means he can speak spiritually and then he can approve of your whole existence, your life. Psalms 139 and 14. I know I'm preaching. I will praise thee for I am fearfully and what? Wonderfully made. That means you're not a mistake. Look at somebody and say, you're not a mistake. Mistake don't, mistakes don't come to church. Mistakes don't seek after God. Mistakes don't want God's will. I will praise thee for I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Marvelous are thy works and that my soul knoweth right well. Now the devil uses, this is the problem, the devil uses sin and shame to cause us to get our approval from the world and not from God. When we are in sin, we run from God. When we are ashamed, we hide from him. This causes us to seek worldly means to gain approval. So in order to be truly approved of by God, you got to live right. Yeah, because when you're in sin, you run from God. And when you are ashamed of the sin that you are in, you hide from God. So you're running and hiding from your approval. That means you got to get it from the world. What you're wearing, how much money you have, your job, your status, what neighborhood you live in, what car you driving. That becomes your approval because you're in sin. And all that is in the world is the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eye, and the what? Pride of life. Amen. That's why we don't walk around here judging folks by possessions. Some of the most corrupt folks on the face of this earth drive nice cars. Amen. Some old rapper got money. Boy, I was watching, ooh, Lord. I watched a live experience. Kanye West, album release, Donda 2. I didn't watch the whole thing. I just, somebody sent me the link. I clicked on it. And when I saw it, I was like, is this gospel? It's supposed to be gospel, I guess. Huh. So, you know, I've, I, it was late, but I woke Jay Bryant. Did I wake you up? Had to have somebody to talk to about this. So I was like, Jay, have you seen this? He's like, I'm not watching that. I said, well, I'm just watching some of it so I can see. And just a little bit I saw. He was performing around a church. Church was on fire. Water. They, 
walking on water the whole time. Then he got the Migos up there cussing, referring to women as bees through the whole song. Using the F word, what they gonna do to women, all of this. Marilyn Manson came out lurking and rapping. Then had a song with Triple X Titension, who's dead, but a demon. He's got two covers on it, or two features on it. Yeah. Travis Scott comes out. I mean, had the folks at Astro World even been paid yet? He, and I said, look at this. This is what the church. This is the one that the preachers took their children to see. With the discernment of a donut. That's, that's your discernment. If you fail for that, you have the discernment of a glazed donut. No toppings. No toppings. That's too, that's, that's too much. That's too much discernment. No toppings. The cake donut, the one they bake in the oven. You know, that's the fake donut. I can make that at home. I ain't going to no donut shop and buying a baked donut. You better fry that thing. Man, I came here for some colorful stuff. Stuff oozing out. Stuff dripping off the top. Don't you give me no old dry cake. You know what I'm talking about? That old cake when you just, you got a drink, orange juice. I need an extra large orange juice to digest this cake. Dried up, dry. That's your dessert, an old dried up cake donut that's been sitting out for weeks. Mrs. Baird's with the black X on it. You know that package means that it didn't sell in time. It's a little hard. Put it in the microwave, soften it up. Now, it might give you cancer, but it'll be soft. Yeah, but that's what the church, the church opened their doors, brought this wickedness in, approved of it. And then fought the folks that came against it. I had folks ready to kill me because I said something about it. But when we are ashamed, we hide from him. This causes us to seek worldly means to gain approval. That's all Kanye's doing, seeking worldly means. Man, if you save, you don't need the world to approve of you. Why are you constantly trying to get the approval of the world? You gonna let demons rap for approval? Genesis 3 and 10, and he said, I heard thy voice in the garden, and I was afraid. Why? Because you sinned. You sinned, Adam, and you was ashamed. So you were afraid. You found out you were naked and you hid from God. That you knew God before you did this. Are you able to hide from him? What? You can't look at somebody and say, you can't hide from God. Yeah. However, we can never feel we are good enough for others in this life. Kanye can have, he can walk Satan right out there with him. You already had somebody dressed up like Jesus. Next is Satan. Bring them out there. You still, folks still gonna disapprove of you. You can't make people approve of you in this life. No matter what they say, you'll never feel good enough. Once you're on the path of trying to please people, you'll never feel good enough. The Bible called them men pleasers. We weren't created to please men. That's not in our job description. Because we make mistakes and stumble at times, we will always have thoughts of those we failed, hurt, or disappointed. Because you have failed somebody, you've hurt somebody, and you've disappointed someone. 
That's why we can't go around talking about how disappointed we are and hurt we are. You've hurt people too. Amen. We had that lesson last week, didn't we? These thoughts can cause us to carry low self-worth if we are constantly measured by worldly standards and expectations. That's why when a child is born, you don't put the world system on them. You don't walk around telling them how great they're going to be in the earth. You're going to be a great football player. Oh, boy, you're going to score 20 touchdowns. See, I only scored 15. Oh, but I see something different on you. Oh, I see the legs of a, of a cheetah on you. Oh, I speak it right now. Baby just came holding his head up. You holding the head up just so you can speak. Oh, I speak NFL contract. I see a contract in your future. You don't put worldly expectations on your child like that. Your child is not going to bring your whole family up. Then when he can't do it and get cut from the team, he's going to be selling drugs. Out there slanging. I know I'm preaching in here. I ain't pushing my kid. Oh, no, you don't do that. No, you let them find their own way. Find what they like to do. Find who they are. It works. Because they'll be happy with it. Amen. Amen. I ain't never put a microphone in Landon's hand when he was young and preach for your daddy. Come on, let me see you. Hey, thank you, D Dad. No, come on, say it. Boy, say it from the gullet. Thank you, Lord. I did. Y'all better quit being caught up in the little kids entertainment online. Oh, did you hear that boy preach at the Walmart? Who that little boy just preached? I saw the stupidest one of the day. Little boy, little boy laid hands on his mother and his father and they fell out under the anointing power. Little boy just, he's sitting there. They took his hands and put them on him. And they just, oh, they, ah, bah, 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 ah. they all just fell out. I said, a little boy, he just sitting there. You know what he was thinking about. Where's my Tonka truck? You can pass me them fruit snacks over there. <laughs> Stupid! Now, what did that do? And then you going to show that boy that video and try to put that on him. Like God calling to knock people out with his baby hands. <laughs> Quit falling for this stuff. Oh, did you hear the one about the little boy that dreamed he was in heaven? How old was he, six? <laughs> I ain't listening to no six. And you quit putting them. You made a video and uploaded it of his story. He's six. Jesus didn't even come on the scene till he was 12. That boy's six. He doing something the Savior didn't do. No, I don't want to hear it. No. Don't. I'm preaching in here. Well, but God can use. Why would God use a six-year-old when he got grown people that can preach? He got people that he's trained in preaching, that have studied the word, that know the word. I need to hear no six-year-old playing with the refrigerator magnets. <laughs> I'm sorry. Y'all can say what you want. Y'all, y'all, that junk, that don't move me, man. They try to qualify everybody to have a word. Everybody don't have a word. Especially when they only know 30 words. I know you don't have a word. You don't have enough words to have a word. Go learn some more words. Practice on your words. This is the funniest thing. I got to tell it. This is hilarious. Me and Sabatha, we went, 
we were in uh, Arizona, Phoenix. I was speaking in Phoenix, and she was there. You know, she worked the table, so y'all know she just no nonsense. She move everybody, get everybody going like they're supposed to be going, because she's always looking out for me. And there was this one little boy. He had to be about eight years old. He just kept bothering her. Remember this? <laughs> he kept bothering her for about he wanted my autograph. And she said, he don't sign autographs. He ain't signing your DVD. He said, ah, I want to. So he went away, and then he came back. But can I come in? She said, boy, you need to be somewhere working on your own handwriting. <laughs> Remember that? cause us to carry low self-worth if we are constantly measured by worldly standards. 1 Samuel 16 and 7. But the Lord said unto Samuel, look not on his countenance or on the height of his rule. Hey! Y'all, that's my scripture right there. Oh, hey, I felt something. Ah! Oh! Mm, that's my scripture. That encouraged me, Jeff. Oh, because I ain't got much height of stature. This scripture spoke to G. Craig Lewis. Lord said, uh-uh, not the tall one. Mm. Oh, go get that little one in there. You looking at the wrong one. The anointed don't travel that high. Oh, no. No, 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 no. Boy, I twisted this scripture all the way up when I was young. This gonna work for me. Thank you, Lord. <laughs> but the Lord said unto Samuel, look not on his countenance or the height of his stature, because I have refused him. For the Lord seeth not as what? Yeah. Folks have said stuff about you because they can't see like God. Yeah. Folks have put you down because they can't see what God is doing. Yeah. All people can see is what they're doing. They can't see what God is doing. They'll never understand it. So they put you down. Man looketh on the outward appearance. But the Lord does what? Looketh on the heart. I know I'm preaching in him. Oh, we need this, Lord. When our esteem is based on worldly achievements and selfish goals instead of God's plan for us, then we have failed at life. So people pushing you to be famous, to be rich, to, 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 be, to own something like they want all the women to be a boss. Why would you want to be a boss and you a woman? Your voice got to get deep for you to even say it, boss. you want to be a boss see there's something in you that somebody messed up that makes you want to constantly take authority over a man something is wrong something got messed up that's what's wrong with the church now women aren't teachable that's the worst wife ever when a man can't teach his wife, you married a witch. I'm sorry. She's a witch. And you know it. Yeah, you can't teach her. She leave here on the way, in the car, on the way. Oh, well, Pastor, see now, when he said, you know, and you just sitting there. Oh, God. This camera, put that camera on me. <laughs> and she was over there, I see, and then, uh huh. And then when he said this, and then when he said that, and then when he said this, and you just, oh. <laughs> the man is supposed to teach his wife. But his wife has to be teachable. Oh, I don't care if you don't clap. 
don't care if you don't ever come back. Don't come back. I don't care. You're going to leave anyway. You're going to leave anyway. You got to be teachable. And you got to know why you're not teachable. That's a spirit. You weren't created that way. Yeah, but you out there trying to be a boss and trying to not, 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 I got, look what I got. I, uh-huh. You failed at life. Because you're not pleasing God with your actions and he's the manufacturer. That means you are a product that failed to function like it was created to function. Man, I'm preaching in here. Yeah. There is nothing we can accomplish that will fill the void of not having God's affirmation. Nothing. Ecclesiastes 2 and 11. Then I looked on all the works that my hands have wrought. This is Solomon. And on, the, and on the labor that I labored to do. And behold, all was what? Nothing. Nothing. He said there was no profit under the sun. Solomon, you profited $2 trillion, bro. It was paid. He said, no, there's no profit under the sun. So all that you work hard for and achieve to be a boss and in charge and large and an independent woman and I don't need a man and a, a, yeah. All that you worked hard, it means nothing. All you're going to do is get sick. Your body is going to change on you. Yeah, your blood pressure is going to go up. Your reproductive system is going to fold. Being a boss. I'll preach in here. Hey, man, I don't care how you're looking at me. God's approval comes when we are obedient to his plan and are washed and regenerated by what? Word. His word. <laughs> That's when he approves of you. No matter where we are in life, we can always be made new in God. His word will wash away our low self-worth and devalued image of ourselves so we can see ourselves as he sees us. If you see yourself as God sees you, you don't have to be no boss. You don't have to be the boss of anything. Because money doesn't dictate who you are. Positions don't dictate it. Jewelry and cars, clothes and houses, none of that dictates who you are when you have God's approval. <laughs> First Peter 2 and 9, but ye are a chosen generation, chosen out of the world. A royal priesthood, royal in God's kingdom. A holy nation set apart from the world. A peculiar people not acting like the world. That ye should show forth the praises of him who hath called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. Look at somebody and say, you're different. Look at him and say, you're different. You don't have to be a boss. You're different. Just as God made a sacrifice with blood to clothe Adam and Eve in their fallen state. Remember when they fell, they hid themselves and covered themselves with leaves. And God knew the penalty of their sin required blood. So he killed an animal, the first sacrifice, took the skin and clothed them. He saved them by clothing them. That means he clothed them in salvation. Clothed them in his righteousness. That was symbolic of what his son Jesus was going to do. But this time Jesus would be the sacrifice to come and give his life so we can all be clothed. Jesus is our sacrifice to pay for our sins and clothe us with righteousness. This is the only way. Look at somebody and say only way. To truly experience love and approval in this life. 
Isaiah 61 and 10. I will greatly rejoice in the Lord. My soul shall be joyful in my God. For he has clothed me with the garments of salvation. He has covered me with the robe of righteousness. As a bridegroom decketh himself with ornaments. Now think about this. A bridegroom, what is he doing? The groom is dressing himself up for the bride. And adorning himself. This is how God sees us. Dressed up. People will see you and talk about you. Remember what you did to me. And, oh, you think you this and that and this. But all you got to do is be approved of by God. And no, say, no, see, this is what you see. But in the spirit, I'm adorned. I'm dressed up. I have the garment of salvation. I'm clothed in righteousness. I don't look this way to God like I look to you. So people are going to say what they want to say. You better know who you are. Right. Summary. So many live their lives for the approval of others. Many of you have been rejected by words from your own parents. Parents didn't even want you. Daddy didn't want you. Somebody didn't want you. Somebody neglected you, abandoned you, whatever. Some of you are suffering from the words of your friends, pulling you down, tearing you down. Yeah. In 2022, if you're a woman and you say, I want a husband and a family and I want to be able to take care of my husband and my family, boy, they'll look at you like you crazy. What? You don't want to be a boss? Large and in charge, running things, girl. You got to run things. And all the ones running things in the club on the weekend, dance with some old stank dude in the dark, trying to get away. From their reality. Because all out in public. Yeah that's me to bother about. When they get home. Lord take this weight off me. Save me from myself. Wasn't meant to carry this. Men too. Striving and neglecting their family. So you striving to be something. But neglect your family. You're going to be nothing. Because your family is your report card. I know I'm crazy. <laughs> Man, folk look at me crazy, but they always look like that. Sister Anne Marie, they always look like that. I'm used to it. And you can't hurt my feelings with your looks. Ugly self. <laughs> they get into debt. They commit crimes. They live immoral lifestyles and are bound by secret sins. All because they seek approval and have a void that only God can satisfy. That's what happens to you when you go chase the world. You go chase the world, all this happens. Debt especially. Well, you got to spend money to be the boss. Boy, don't you let nobody <laughs> sell you on that. You work it only to pay debt back. You ain't no boss. The loan is the boss. The percentage rate, the APR, whatever they call it, that's the boss. The interest rate is the boss. You don't understand. But they get into debt, commit crimes, live in moral lifestyles, all of this stuff for approval. They step out to do things that were against God's plan for them. Well, how do you know it's against God's plan? Does it bring you grief? Does it bring you worry, stress? Then it wasn't God's plan. Boy, don't you get it twisted. I get sick of folks. I get sick of folks. I get tired of folks. Just tired of them. Uploaded the prayer. So I get to all these emails, huh, huh, contemplative prayer. See, I knew you was into that. <laughs> Have you heard the prayer? Well, no, but, I, ooh, there's nothing I can do. There's nothing I can do. It's always something wrong. So, you know, I get sick of folks, like, I'm sick of you, like, bye. But they ain't stressing me. I ain't worrying and stressing. Because this is God's job I'm doing. 
You see what I'm saying? I know what I'm supposed to be doing, and what I'm supposed to be doing ain't supposed to be bringing me stress. Being sick of folks and stress is two different things. Just got, I always got something to say. But, you know, hey, that's life. People are like that. They make you not even want to be on the internet and post nothing. That's what they try to do. Mm -hmm. You know those shoes you got are linked to the satanic temple of the... (laughs) <laughs> you, you know where you got that from me I taught you that oh if you don't get away from <laughs> just, just people just... <laughs> they strive for wealth internet popularity and the acceptance of others in efforts to fill their God void. So when you run from God, you are still trying to fill the void where God is missing. So that's why you're striving for more. They even pledge to false gods and sing and dance to the music of anti-God artists. In your playlist, you popping to some old ratchet sexual, demonic, devil-worshiping music. That's hard to believe and call yourself a believer. Hard to believe. But only God can fill a God void. He created us that way. He created us to only be satisfied by him. Yeah, yeah. That's what sin is. Sin is missing him. Missing the mark. He's the mark. (laughs) No matter what you achieve or what what accolades you receive in his life, there is no replacing the approval of your creator. His approval and love surpasses all that can be attained in this life. When God is for us, who can be? Why wouldn't you want to be? I mean, when you're picking teams to play a sport, don't you want the best player on your team? So why would you want to be on God's team? You got the greatest being on your side. And if God is for us, who can be against us? When God is on your side, can there be a greater accomplishment? Allow God to approve of you. Allow his word to be the testament of your life. When God's approval light is shining through us, we are living with his purpose and will greet a smiling Savior upon his return. Amen? Amen. Jeremiah 29 and 11, one of my favorite scriptures. For I know the thoughts that I think towards you, saith who? Jeremiah. Did Jeremiah say this? No, saith the Lord. I know the thoughts. <laughs> Don't let nobody tell you what God is thinking about you. And I know there is a real gift of prophecy. There are real words of knowledge and those kind of things. But some of this stuff is foolishness. I don't need no random online folks. Some say send this to 20 people and be like, but please. I don't need no come. Man, I get, ooh, do you know how many people prophesy on me and tell me the future of what I'm supposed to be doing? And I don't read none of it, ever. Ever. You know why I don't have to read that? I already know. Because Jeremiah 29 says, For I know the thoughts that I think towards you, saith the Lord. Thoughts of what? Peace. So I already know if I'm in God, I'm going to have peace. Yeah. He said, and not of evil. So I already know. That evil don't have to get me if God is with me. To give you an expected end. His expected end for me. I already know how the story's going to end. Don't need your prophecy. And who I see, I see the shadow of a donkey's tail. And it's just, it started swaying. Why if you don't shut up? I don't need that 
saying you need to quit needing it. Don't you be coming to church. Oh God, I need somebody to walk up to me and say, no, you don't. Pick up the word of God and read what he said. God has already told you what he thinks about you. He said his thoughts towards you are thoughts of peace and not of evil. Everyone stand to your feet. You can't listen to what everybody has to say about you. Everyone's label, everyone's opinion, everyone's thoughts. Man, you will be schizophrenic trying to please everyone, trying to keep up with everything that everyone thinks. The only thing that matters is what God thinks about you. And God has you in this place to learn what he thinks about you. Amen? So I'm going to pray. We're going to pray. If that's you, if you need to dump the world's approval, the opinions of others, opinions of family, all of that stuff, and you want only the opinion of God driving you in this hour, I need you to come up right now. Come on. Come up and get this. If this message was for you, quit thinking down on yourself. You are much more than that. You are valuable. He gave his son for you because you mean something to him. Don't let this world tell you that you don't matter. Don't let this world tell you that you're less than anyone. Don't let this world corrupt your opinion of yourself. Come on up, whoever it is, just come on. Don't let the world's opinion be your opinion. Trust what God said about you. He created you. He made you. He brought you here in the very fact that you're responding to the call of God speaks volumes for your purpose and who you are. It's good to have people say good things about you, but it's better to not even need that. It's better to not even need it because sometimes you can't trust it. But you know what God says is real. You know because he's the manufacturer. And when the manufacturer approves of you, that's all that matters. Amen? Everyone bow your heads. Father God, I just thank you, Lord. Thank you for messages, God, that just meet us right where we are. Thank you, Father God, for the truth of your word that was spoken in this place, God. And though this is not a this is not psychology or anything like that new age God this is Bible and we believe what your Bible says about us we believe the Bible is your, are your words and God we believe that you have called us to be set apart a holy nation peculiar people set apart for this time so God help us to see how you truly feel about us come on lift your hands to him Every negative self-image I speak against right now in the name of Jesus. Whoever said it, whoever spoke it, they were out of line. I cancel their words right now. That father that may have been wayward and said the wrong things or just did the wrong things and ignored you, abandoned you. That mother that lashed out and called you out of your name and spoke evil of you because of what was done to her. I call all of that out and we cast those words down in the name of Jesus all negative self images negative low self worth we cancel it right now no matter how it came we speak against it right now that witch that put striving in you we cancel that right now in the name of Jesus that spell that was done we cancel it right now in the name of Jesus that angry man that angry woman that spoke evil of you we cast it down right now that person that keeps bringing up your past we cast that down right now those people that will not let you move on from them we cancel their assignment right now remove them out of your life in the name of Jesus Father God we come against the devil every vice 
every tool, everything that he's been using, Father God, to make us think ill of ourselves. In the name that is above every name, we cancel it. We cast it down. In the name of Jesus, we cast it off our children. We call their names right now. Negative images. We cast it off of our children. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. We cover our wives right now as men, husbands. In the name of Jesus. Father God, protect us from the opinions of this society and opinions of this world and the opinions of the demons and the devils that operate through many people. Father God, we speak freedom right now to believe that you have approved of us in the name of Jesus. Now fill us with your approval right now. Let us feel it, God. Let us feel it. Make it personal to us. Father God, let us feel you. Wrap your arms around us spiritually. Hold us and console us. Let us know that we belong to you and that you approve of us, that we're good with you. Father God, that you love us so much that you're going to return for just us and only us in the name of Jesus. We receive it right now. We receive it right now in Jesus' name. Now, come on, give God some praise. Hallelujah. 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 Come on, put your arms around somebody and say, God loves you the way you are. Come on, hug somebody else. God loves you the way you are. Come on, tell them you're not messed up. It's not over. God loves you and he approves of you the way you are. Hallelujah. 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 Oh, I feel generations of ills falling off of people's lives. Negative words falling off of people's lives. Generational curses that were spoken over people falling off forever that's not who you are that's not who God made you to be hallelujah hallelujah God loves you come on put your hands on yourself and say God loves me the way I am God loves me the way I am you may have something to say but God loves me the way that I am this is how he made me this is how he shaped me he's using everything the good and the bad to make me who I need to be all things work together for the good of them that love God and are called according to his purpose hallelujah Hallelujah. 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 You may be seated. Come on, Elder. Hallelujah. God made you just like that. And, 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 and you know something special about the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end. He knew your end in the beginning. So he knew what you was going to do. He knew you would mess up. He knew you'd have error. He knew you wouldn't be perfect. He knew you'd have to come to him. He knew you'd need forgiveness. He knew you'd need Jesus. That's why Jesus came and died for you. Because he knew what you would need. But he still loves you. He still approves of you. You are still somebody. Don't let the devil tell you who you are. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. 